Good evening, everybody. Good evening. All right, let's see if we're lucky enough to go live. You could come a little bit more in. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Come to smoke that there. Yeah. Okay. No, I can't. Yeah. All right. Atma Namaste. Atma Namaste. Atma Namaste to me, Amit, both of you. Um, actually on Friday, on Friday even we have Sri Ram session, then sometimes when we miss the book study session, even there are uh, no, uh, no recordings available. How to cope up with this? There are recordings. For, for all the sessions we are doing, Theatric Double, uh, it's there on Vimeo. Uh, if you looked at the, um, at the little uh, information that we've been sending, uh, with reference to the Zoom link, there's also the Vimeo link. Go back to that same link and you can access all the earlier sessions. Yeah? Thank so let's start so the short prayer. Yes. Sorry? Yes. Yeah. What a cute. Looking <coughs> everyone before we go ahead. Are we live? Uh, no, not possible to go live again this time. Uh, so we can't go live. Okay. So chapter 10 today. So let's close our eyes. Connect down to the palate, inhale and exhale to the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grand Master Chua Koksui, Lord Mahakaruji Meili. Thank you for all the priceless teachings, for the great foundation you've given us. To all the great beings of knowledge, light and power, especially to the beings and teachers and masters of theosophy, to the angels and beings of communication on our respective Wi-Fi's, to our soul and divine self, we humbly ask for a great, great blessing all through this session to bless us with greater light of knowledge, of understanding, of discernment, to have greater clarity of these amazing teachings. Help us to be able to make it part of our lives and use it to become effective instruments in your service. We thank you in full faith, with gratitude, with deep respect and love, we thank you. Atma Namaste, everyone. Welcome to chapter 10, the center on the top of the head. Yes, so that's where we are heading now. So if you have your um, books or your online uh, versions, please take them out so it becomes easier. <clears throat> right, so we ultimately come to the last chakra, both in their case and uh, with reference to Master Chua's. And uh, the center, which is the seventh for them, is situated on top of the head. Yeah, so the top of the head is right here. So this is what you and I refer to as the top of the head. And so right there is this particular energy center. They say it's very different from other books. And in the Indian, uh, in the Indian language, probably they're no, referring no, no, to some... Sun... No, no, in Indian books. Yeah, but it's different in other six, not different from other. Ah, sorry, uh, this chakra is very different from all the other chakras we've looked at. And so they say that in the Indian context, specifically with reference to the Sanskrit text, they talk about this being the chakra with a thousand petals, right? However, when you actually look at it, they say it primarily on the outer, on the outer level, it has what you call 960 petals. And in the core, in the center, in the middle, it has what it, what it calls the 12 petals. And this is the same as what you and I um, understand in what Master Cho mentions in his books, right? So that is more or less the same. Now, with reference to um, the colors, right? So they talk about this chakra, really very, very uh, attractive, beautiful, um, and it's truly amazing. And so they use the word most uh, resplendent of all, full of indescribable chromatic effects because of the, 900, the 960 petals, according to Master Chua, is basically rainbow colors. It's got all the colors around, so it's, it's truly beautiful. And... Um, it also talks about that it's vibrating with uh, almost inconceivable rapid, rapid, rapidly, sorry, rapid, rapidity. So when you look at it, for me, uh, being rapid uh, is basically a movement, right? Which is really, really fast. And so for me, probably that is the movement of the chakra on your head, which rotates, you know, clockwise and counterclockwise. When it goes like that, when it's really, really rapid. And with this amazing colors being uh, released out of it. The, this is what it looks visually. And so they continue to say that in the center, however, it is actually a gleaming, which is 
probably brilliant white and uh, the core is still golden in color and remember that's the core that really connects to you know that the antakarna that we talked about or the spiritual core we talk about in in our school and that's the same one through which uh, you have the seeds coming down and moving ahead to the next part they say that the center re receives in its uh, outer portion the violet rays which comes from the throat which again comes from the spleen so from the spleen comes to the throat and then remember we were talking about that dark blue which comes to the lower part of the uh, head region and then the uh, bluish purplish violet that goes towards the crown and so they're talking about the violet coming from the heart basically the the first source is the spleen and they talk about the yellow that comes uh, from the heart towards the center of this particular chakra yeah and so you look at it uh, which i think amit mentioned earlier so there is that connection between the heart and the crown going towards the middle and there's also remember this is also a distributive center for divine energy to go down at the same time it receives energy from the spleen comes from the spleen into your throat and then goes up uh, but remember even the crown uh, which i mentioned earlier also absorbs air prana not just the spleen that absorbs air prana but the crown chakra also absorbs uh, air prana so moving on um, no no i'm going on to here so moving on so you realize that this particular uh, chakra that we are talking about is really beautiful but remember what master chakra mentions to us that initially this one doesn't look like a nice beautiful lotus with a thousand petals it's actually flat like a disc it starts off being like this and then with a little bump yes and then becomes a bud and then blooms so you need to remember that the activation of this chakra probably takes uh, eons of time for this this body to have or rather the soul to have evolved to have a chakra that actually starts to bloom and so for an ordinary person it might be very very different someone uh, who is more religious uh, you know doing their daily rituals on a regular basis would be different someone who is very spiritual it would be very very different and so this chakra can start to look really really big and represented as you and i know in masochar's books um, the crowns that kings and queens wear including the deities in india uh, the crown that you find uh, saints uh, or great teachers sometimes um, represented by the halo around the head all talking about the illumination of this particular chakra or the awakening of this chakra and this light that radiates uh, which is which is truly beautiful in all directions around the head now when this it's going to get recorded like that yeah, so when when it starts to become bigger and bigger it also talks about your spiritual growth as a soul yes so that's in line with your spiritual growth and we'll come to a few more things um, as we go ahead in a few minutes yeah, you want to go ahead yeah so the Can center center at the top of the head right um the center seven situated on the top of the head it says it's somewhat different in construction from the other six you see this is the thing with some some um, a lot of actually books on theosophy and other in in normal esoteric schools uh, not just theosophy they tell you yes it's different it's this it's this but how is it different you know uh, they'll tell you yeah it has to become resplendent but then you don't you don't find out how to make it resplendent right so um how is the chakra different from all the other six okay so um we'll come to it uh it is describing okay this is just a number of petals uh in addition to this it possesses a sort of substitute whirlpool or minor activity in its central portion so uh it's like a subsidiary um or chakra inside right which has 12 undulations of its own but it has not specified where that force comes from it has specified that the primary force gives the 960 spokes but it has not specified where the 12 uh, the the force for the 12 spokes is coming from okay so just keep that in mind i'm not going to talk about that um <laughs> when fully alive now this is the key word okay this is the key word when fully alive here you sort of get a hint if the author is very uh, and many of these uh, mature developed authors are very careful with their words just like master choa when they say the word fully alive compared to the other you see if you remember very carefully 
Um, for the basic chakra or the base of spine center, did not use the word fully alive. They said the chakra has to be aroused into full activity. The word aroused into full activity implies that it is reliant on something. Okay, and for the other chakras, most of the time, they said the chakra when it's vivified. Yeah. You remember? But for this chakra and this chakra only, it is calling it alive, like Frankenstein alive. You know, like <laughs> to have life, okay, on its own. Okay, and I will not talk about that, but that's for you to think about. Uh, so, so this one, it talks about fully alive. So it is a... Uh, a being on its own, uh, very different from the other six. That's how it is different from the six. That's what. That's one of the ways, by the way. Um, and it's perhaps the most resplendent of all, full of indescribable chromatic effects, vibrating in consumable rapidity. Yeah. So this is in. This is true. In um, um, please unveil the secret. You have to. You have to. It's not about not unveiling the secret. This is an open session, so. Uh, I cannot talk, uh, there is a limit. I've already, I think, uh, tested the boundaries of that in you know, these sessions, but you need to think about it. That's the purpose of study. It's not necessary to get the answer. I gave you the hint. The whole <laughs> thing was the hint. <laughs> I gave you the hint already. <laughs> this is the hint. Otherwise, if people are reading, they'll say, yeah, it's fully alive, blah, blah, blah. I gave you the hint. Otherwise, the question is, would you really look at it? Would you really think about it? Okay. Um, now, this is true, inconceivable rapidity, central portion is gleaming, white flush. This is true when the chakra is highly activated or fully alive. Fully alive. <laughs> so the question is, how are most people's chakras? Is it dead or what? And how is that connected to Moses' story of people being spiritually dead? Anyway, not spiritually dead. They were actually dead and they were brought to life. Anyway. But he explains it differently. He explains it differently. But you have to remember, all these stories have different levels of truth. All these stories. Like in the Achieving Oneness class, when, when you teach, you say, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the light. That is from the point of view of the um, higher soul. For those of you who have done the course uh, or have read the book, that is the point of view from the higher soul talking to the incarnated soul. Okay? Um, but the same thing, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the light can be said from the point of view of the teacher telling the student. The teachers, the higher I am, guiding the lower I am. Anyway, that is not part of this talk. Just to show you that, you know, it's just to broaden your horizon. Uh, there's no right and wrong. In spirituality, that's the one of the issues with it. There are different levels of truth, okay? Um, now, this is true in evolved people, all right? In evolved people, either a person who's, uh, just hit, just meditating and the chakra is rotating very, very fast for a long time uh, or people who's highly, highly developed. Because in most people, uh, and it's really, really beautiful, by the way. I remember Master Choa, uh, when he was looking at the drawing in the book, he was actually not 100% happy with it because he says, I cannot bring out that beauty <laughs> of the crown. It is so wonderful, the colors, you know, it's sparkly, it's all these colors. He says, I, the artist cannot just bring it out for some reason. So that is the best he could do. Um, I think on the physical level, the colors that we can bring with the paints that we have is very limited compared to the colors that is there probably even the etheric level or even in the, uh, if you look at it in the astral level. Yeah. Okay. Um, now the center. Now uh, I will come back to this whole gleaming white flush with gold in its heart. You have to see... Uh, what do you mean by heart? Heart is like the central part, right? I think so, right? Yeah, usually it's the heart. Usually central. So you, you want to go to the heart of the matter. You want to go to the heart. You want to go to the center, the meat, okay, the paneer or whatever. That doesn't make sense. But the whole inside part, the fleshy part, right? So when you say, when it's uh, flushed with gold in its heart, it's not really, uh, the heart is the central 12. So what that does is, that's why you see the mango shape coming out of that. And many of the times that looks like two horns coming out. We'll talk about it. All right. Uh, and I have pictures for that. Oh, why don't I just do it, do it now? Oh, did we share? Not yet. I'll share. So here we're looking at um, the chakra. It has um, 
on the crown of the head, 960, 960, so this is the same thing. And it has violet, it has blue, it has yellow, it has green, it has orange, it has red. That is on the outer peripheries. Nothing is there in the center but gold, okay? And most people, it's much smaller. So what they're saying is, you know, it's resplendent, it's big, it's vibrating very, very fast. Most people, it's not vibrating fast. The heart is bigger than the crown, okay? So that is in most people. And the orange, by the way, like I mentioned before, is like mathematically calculated. That's why if you're a healer, don't take orange from the crown because then uh, to offset the orange removed, it'll produce other colors more. Anyway, we won't get into it. Just don't use orange from the crown. It's all uh, in its proper proportions. Now, this is uh, from the Achieving Oneness uh, with the Higher Soul book. It says the crown uh, worn by kings is but a poor replica or symbol of the indescribable same word <laughs> resplendent crown chakra center of a spiritually developed person spiritually developed over here did not mention that so you, you you know you have to be more detailed now this is you see those two things coming out so that is when the crown is actually coming out of the heart you have the gold and what happens is uh, this is based on a story uh, uh, you know moses came down after receiving the 10 commandments and um, the, the people who are not as developed, but a little bit clairvoyant, they said it was written, they saw horns coming out of Moses' head. So when you spoke to Master Cho about this, he's like, come on, he's the saint. How can you have horns? Okay. So he says, actually, those are not horns. Those are actually golden beams of energy that are coming out of the head of Moses because of the interaction with the higher beings getting the Ten Commands for such a long time, very highly, highly developed crown chakra. So this, the less developed people, they saw it as horns. That is one level of truth. Okay. So that is, I think I've covered everything on this. And then the center receives its outer portion, the violet ray which passes to the throat while its center portion yellow. is received from the yellow ray from the center. Huh. This is partially true. Don't forget that it is one of the major entry points of um, divine. spiritual divine energy. It's one of the major entry points of energy within your body also. All right. All right. So let's move on. So it says here again, uh, earlier they were talking about becoming alive. Yes. And so now it goes to the arousing of the corresponding astral center which means it's there, it exists. Uh, we need to get it to awaken again. So arousing the corresponding astral center rounds off and completes the astral life, endowing a man with the perfection of his faculties. And so when the crown chakra, not only on the etheric level, but also on the astral level starts to bloom and grow, there's going to be a change in that person. And this we already know that the heart is usually big. Right. So once we have the heart big enough, which means that the heart chakra that we have, this heart and the solar plexus, the solar plexus is big, but not as big as the heart. Correct. And so when the heart is really big, it takes also control or it's able to um, keep keep the solar plexus in check. And so we don't get crazy with our lower emotions, especially negative, but it's able to use the positive lower emotions to get the person to drive forward, to help family, to help friends. That's as far as the heart is concerned. But as this heart starts to become bigger and bigger, it starts to influence the crown, which also starts to bloom. Now, when the crown starts to bloom, it starts to then affect you and I as souls, the effect on life to people outside friends and family. Yes. So it becomes a larger community. And for you and me, it doesn't even stop at pranic healers. It doesn't even stop, stop at Arhatic yogis. We realize if there's someone out there who needs help, we want to do whatever we can to help that person. All right. And so we start to recognize that uh, the influence of this crown chakra opening up is obviously love on a high, high degree, not just to one person, not just to a group of persons, not even to people that we know, but on, on the largest extent, that is towards what you and I would call uh, the whole of human, the whole of the human race or mankind. And now what happens with that is when the crown starts to become bigger and bigger and bigger, uh, this, the astral also is starting to function on a completely different level. So the, the ability to vibrate, right, for this chakra to vibrate also goes on to higher levels of even the astral quality of uh, the material in that particular body. And so when the astral body 
if you look at it, uh, corresponds, uh, so the corresponding astral body, uh, which we are talking about, allows you then to gain intuition, which we talk about, one of those faculties which helps you to probably see. Now, initially, it's partial intuition. Later on, it becomes fully activated intuition that allows you to then sense and recognize what is to be done, when it's to be done, whether it's with family, whether it's with your business, whether it's with your research, what is to be done and how to go forward. And so a lot of discoveries, a lot of changes in life have been made because of intuitive messages that people have received on a regular basis with, with reference to what they have to do. Yes. And so with that intuition, like, for example, I, I had this a friend of mine who called me and she says, you know, very strangely, maybe a few months before this whole lockdown, she decided to take a whole business and put it online. And she says to me, because I did this few, uh, a few months before, she says, I'm able to survive right now. Whereas a lot of others who weren't even able to probably come up with this uh, idea at that point are still struggling. And, and some of them don't even have enough money. They don't even know if they can pay off their loans for their house or their bikes and other things. So the intuition that's being one faculty already starts getting awakened. And then there are other faculties that start to also um, work because it's not once this opens up, hopefully the other chakras below it are also under its control. Yes, and so we'll come to that in a bit. I'll just give it just to Amit. The whole thing. Just have these like two paragraphs. Hmm? You want me to do the whole two paragraphs now? Yeah, okay. It's only about the pineal. And the okay, so let me just go ahead to the other. Um, only thing I need to say is I'll come back to this towards the end of the <laughs> session. She's already spoke with the intuitional part, but when I see the word, first of all, you have to notice again, corresponding astral is written. Yeah. Uh, and uh, completes astral life. So you're looking at the astral, etheric, and physical aspects. So what I'm thinking is, uh, when the crown is highly developed, what apart from the spiritual, what Sumi spoke about, what is the um, emo mental, emotional, and physical um, effect? All right. So we'll come to that. Okay. And then it goes on to say, um, now they're referring to two types of people. And so they talk with the first type of person. They say where the astral chakram corresponds to both the sixth, the sixth being the Agnya chakra. Yes. And then the crown chakra, which is the seventh. We're talking about the etheric uh, chakras. Both converge upon the pituitary body or the pituitary gland, which is within the, uh, between the eyebrows behind the Agnya chakra. And the latter organ being practically the only direct link between the physical and the higher planes. And so for them, the connection, right, uh, between, I presume this is uh, with reference to, uh, remember we have the causal, causal plane where the higher soul actually resides and we have the lower mental, then we have the astral. Now, of course, between the astral and the physical, we, we, are, we have a greater understanding of, as to how that works. But greater connection towards the higher is based on this. Now, what that meant completely and fully, I'm not completely sure as well, but definitely that is one type. However, they say there's another type in which this starts to change. Now, the sixth chakra, which is the Agnya chakra, is attached purely to the pituitary gland. Now, this is as per what Master Chaur says, correct? So it says that the Agnya chakra controls the pituitary gland, which is the master gland, which we spoke about on Wednesday. And the second one, they talk about the seventh chakra, which is the crown chakra, that they say coincides, yes, and they talk about it being slightly slanted with the pineal gland. And so this again aligns with what Master Chaur says. The crown chakra is with the pineal gland. The Agni chakra is with the pituitary gland. Now, when this type of person, they say, uh, so they say, which with people of this type becomes a line of direct con communication with the lower mental without apparently passing through the intermediate astral plane in the, in the ordinary way. So you know that when you want to, whichever way of communication, right? It's usually from the causal, coming down to the lower mental, then coming down to the astral, then into the etheric and physical. That's how it's usually supposed to go, one into the other. And the same way upwards, right? So when you want to go up, you go from the physical brain, for example, into the, that's physical, into the etheric, then into the astral, then into the lower mental, and then up to the causal. However, uh, I'm not too sure what they exactly mean, but my understanding is that this is, you and I, remember, when we talk about the crown chakra, the crown chakra is like this, 
But at the root of the crown chakra, down in that stem, lies the pineal gland. And within the pineal gland lies what we call the blue pill or the mental permanent seed. That's at the root of the chakra. And that particular seed is our connection, that is the incarnated soul's connection to the higher soul. So I'm presuming that's what they're referring to here, that through this access that we have, this terminal that we have, we can actually go directly all the way up, not only to the low mental, in my case, directly into the causal uh, level and connect back to our higher soul. And so they're talking about that communication opening up between us, yes, using this access point, which is within our crown, inside the pineal gland to access our higher soul. That's my line of communication. That's my understanding. I could be wrong, but that's where I am. Just to and clarify, just to, the sure. difference is basically, if you want to go to Chennai or from Bangalore or let's say India to Dubai, you have to go to the airport. You have to sit in the uh, airport. You have to Chances. get on the plane, sanitize your hands. No, I'm joking. You have to fly in the plane. You reach there, you go to Kassan, then you reach Dubai. You have to pass through the Arabian Sea, you have to pass through over certain cities, all these things. Or you could just sit here and do a FaceTime to Dubai, <laughs> which is banned. So you do bottom or something to Dubai and you are instantly connected there. All right. So in one second, you bypass all of this and you're there already. So uh, it's much faster. It's a quicker way to reach to... Uh, this is a certain level of truth, just to make you understand the concept right and so that's why for example in raja yoga this particular pineal gland or this point this blue pearl um, it may not be called a pineal gland in many of the other schools they might call it uh, like master says in sufism it's called the essence in the indian tradition it's called the blue pearl accessing the blue pearl and then allowing yourself to reach and connect to your higher soul is one of the fastest ways to do it and that's why they say in the last line here this explains the emphasis uh, sometimes later the development of the pineal gland and so that's why the pineal gland is so important for us now for science it's an atrophied organ it's an organ that is no longer of any use but with reference to the spiritual aspect it is now when you look at also the races that came right the, when we started to evolve there is a time that we had only one eye right and that one eye was then pulled in literally sucked into the body and then came out the two eyes. So they say that that pineal gland was that first eye that you and I had. Yes, which is now inside. But obviously it's, it's very crucial because for us as we spiritually evolve, if you want to access our higher soul, this is one way to definitely do it. Yes. So um, if there's something else, I'll add it later. Amit, you can take on. Yeah, no, you continue with that and I'll take that. Okay, so with regard to this individual stuff, um, I have no idea. <laughs> I do have some idea, but that is classified information. Uh, I'm pretty sure that idea is correct. But when you're dealing with the crown, the higher you go, the more classified it becomes. So for now, um, but uh, you see, the way it's written is very confusing. I'll be honest, because uh, my method of thinking is a bit different. So when I read with one type of individual, it's like this. And with another type of individual, I'm like that. For me, that is too vague. You see, uh, what, what do you mean by type of individual? It's not even explained. Do you mean the ray? So someone who's ray two versus ray one. Do you mean uh, a person... Uh, a person of spiritual development, so developed person versus an undeveloped person. Do you mean an educated person whose mental body is more developed compared to an uneducated person? I mean, what do you mean by a type of individual? So the data for me is a bit uh, insufficient to, to process uh, this information with accuracy. Okay. Uh, and when they say it converges on the pituitary body, I didn't answer what body was, then, they, then later on they said it's okay, the organ. Um, the only direct link between the physical and higher planes. So you're talking about the Ajna and you're talking about the uh, Crown. Seventh. Okay. Well, that is definitely classified information. Um, with another type of person, however, while the sixth chakram is still attached to the pituitary body, uh, the seventh is bent and slanted. It coincides towards the pituitary gland. Okay. 
direct link. So I already explained what I want to explain. I'll come back to it when I'm doing the presentation. And this explains the emphasis of sometimes uh, laid on the development of the pineal gland. It's not really development of the pineal gland, it's development of the uh, mental permanency. And it's not sometimes. I, I, you know, almost a lot of the holy masters have used this technique uh, repeatedly to develop their students. I think I mentioned in the last session. Um, I think so, right? Didn't I? What is that? It's the go to technique, Raja Yoga. Um, you mentioned Raja Yoga, yes. And um, also, wait, what was I going to say? Hmm. Should I say? Okay, uh, <laughs> just uh, have a look at, um, it could be talking about, if you look at Arhatic Yoga level five in uh, the origins of modern pranic healing and Arhatic Yoga, yeah. it has to do the development of the uh, unicorn light. <laughs> Okay. Uh, uh, Since it's written in the book, that's all we can say. You see, the forehead is missing. Anyway. <laughs> I didn't do anything. I was too sure about that. Okay, go ahead. You can talk about that. All right. So, uh, coming towards almost the the last two paragraphs. So they're talking about, we were talking about the astral center so far. Now we're talking about the etheric center. So as the etheric center, that is the awakening at this point, it's not alive anymore. We're talking about awakening the etheric center, enables a man through it to leave the physical body in full consciousness. So you are actually aware of leaving the physical body and moving, yes, moving out of your physical body consciously and also to re-enter re re it without any break. And so you will then be conscious day and and day in and uh, night day in, uh, and day and night. Sorry, um, what is actually happening as you travel through the physical world or the astral world, wherever you want to go? So I remember when Master Cho uh, would do the prep class, we he would ask someone to lead the exercises, and there would be this wall which was about this high, yeah, from the ground, say about uh, four feet high or three and a half feet <coughs> high, and it would be pretty thick about this thing and he would just lie down on it sideways and close his eyes and you can actually hear him snoring so we think master is you know sleeping so you can get away with whatever you're doing and then in between he just wake up and say you didn't do this or you forgot this can you do it properly can you turn on the music if you've missed out anything he's aware and we're wondering how come he's sleeping and he's still aware of what is happening yeah, he snores loudly. Yeah, he snores. he's quite loud when he snores. In the car. And <laughs> Sorry, <stuff>. Master. But, <laughs> but that's how it, but he's very conscious of what is happening with you. Who, who, I mean, we're supposed to be exercising in this particular case or in any other scenario. He's very aware, right? So if you're in the car, he knows whether you're going too fast. And then he would say, there's precious cargo you are traveling with. So be careful. And there are times, uh, I remember Shriyam would tell me how when he would be driving and there are cars in front of him, his eyes are closed and he will just do something like that. And the, the trucks, for example, would just move and the car can just go straight through. I don't try that. Huh? Yeah. That requires... That's, that's Master Chua. We have no idea what he's doing. So just to let you know that he's actually very conscious. So for me, the only person I've seen who seems to be conscious either when he's asleep or otherwise has only been Master, my only experience. I've never, I, when I close my eyes, I'm out. I'm in a different world altogether. I just remember the waking hours of the dream at the, at, at the most, but not more than that. However, um, there are many books that talk about this. Um, and uh, if you read any of these spiritual books, now I've forgotten the name of one of the books that I used to read. And they would actually talk about husband and wife traveling even in the night within the house and going outside together. So I used to think that it was quite amazing. But uh, for some reason... You know, for me, it, it still hasn't happened. But they say that it can happen consciously. You're aware. We've gone to the house together, right? But, uh, not, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, we're very conscious when we're physical. <laughs> <laughs> but when you're asleep, I don't think we're aware of going anywhere out. Uh, though sometimes when, when you do sleep uh, and you have dreams of the teacher or attending a class, sometimes you remember you were there. There was Master Chua there or there were other fellow Arhatic students or Acharyas or whatever. But sometimes you, at least for me, there are there, I know I learned something, but I can't seem to remember it. Yes, so the brain is still getting used to registering what it complete, what it uh, studied or understood there, 
and bring it back into the physical world. Now, lastly, they talk about here uh, the tonsure. Uh, if you know, it's like a little round cap that the um, Roman church, the, the priests wear, and I think even the no, I the think skull it's the shaved. No, I think it's the shaved. Uh, the, they used to shave their head. Oh, sorry. Yes, and but in the, like, the what a, do you call the a, Indian ones? It's an ancient hairstyle where everything is like a tokri. If you know the, what that means. It's Correct. Like, they did not watch anything. Bald, Correct. And only the circumference has hair. Now yeah. men have that naturally after a lot of years of uh, <laughs> losing hair. <laughs> losing hair. And, so if you look at a lot of, uh, you know, uh, I mean, can you get me that statue there? That round one? I mean, the blue and white oh, one. But that one uh, doesn't have the tokri. Really? I think so. It should have. Yeah, it has. He would have. He would have. So if you look at most uh, Catholic saints, uh, you will notice um, if you can see the statue. It's the right? inverse mushroom cut. So can you see this is all shaved. He has hair. If you look at it, it's like a band. That's it. So they only have, uh, I, I don't know if you can see it. Can you see it? So you can see this. This is all the hair. And then on top, it's all bald or, or shaved off or whatever. So they do this, and I've seen this, uh, I think St. Francis Vesasi also has it. Uh, this is St. Anthony, and there are other saints. So basically male. I don't think I've known of any female who, who shaves. So this whole portion here, you know where you keep the skull cap, uh, like in the Jews, that whole portion is shaved off because they say they, they do not want the slightest hindrance so that the, the divine energy that's descending or the... Or the um, if you want to call it the Holy Spirit that's descending down, should not have any obstruction. So to avoid any, any kind of hindrance, they actually shave this whole part so that when divine energy comes, it goes straight into the physical form, right? But for me, I mean, God gave us his hair. And I'm sure it'll go through that. <laughs> yeah, but uh, for them, it's, it's very, it was very particular for the kind of meditation they used to practice. And so uh, to end what I was talking about, uh, the, just to clarify, some of the meditation in old days required tapping techniques and uh, physical touching techniques. So it required you to be bald. They used to even take a uh, small pin and tick, 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 you know, and it, it really, really activates it a lot. And sometimes tick, 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 tick. Oops, sorry. <laughs> I'm just joking. And make maybe, a hole. But they make a small hole. Uh, anyway, in Buddhist tradition, they do that. Correct. So uh, here they were talking about the Roman church and we're talking about uh, they had a special type of meditation where candidates who were practicing this uh, needed this particular part to be, uh, as they say, aroused. And so at that point, they did not want any kind of hindrance, including hair. And so it, it was basically taken off. Yes. So this, if you look at it, if you look at, I think it's the Hinduism Reveal book where Master Chaur talks about the crown chakra. In Sanskrit, it's called the Sahasra chakra, which is the uh, the lotus with a thousand petals. However, there's another name, which is what is mentioned here, which is the Brahma Randra Chakram. Brahma Randra means gateway to heaven. Gateway to God. Yes, or gateway to God. And so if that is the gateway, then where is the key? And so Master Dani says the key is in the heart. So you need the key. Take the, take the key all the way up to the crown and then you can open up the crown, open up the gate and go in, right? Mm -hmm. And so uh, the Brahma Randra uh, sorry, Brahmarantra is also associated with the crown chakra. The opening, yes, the opening of that gate is very important for us to further have uh, uninterrupted, yes, connection with our higher soul and with God. And so that's something that I would like to add at that point. Okay, so the leaving the body in full consciousness for me basically means what she said, plus uh, in simple English, it's basically to be in a state of oneness throughout the day, right? Because when your crown is really, really big, you are one with your higher soul and developed and functional. You're really, really one with your higher soul. Right now, when we say the I am affirmation or after a retreat, if you're an Haratik Yogi or you do the I am affirmation, um, if you've done the Achieving Oneness class, you remember that you're the soul. And then after 10 minutes, you get to work. Sometimes you forget. So what it means is... Um, you know, in full consciousness means you are walking around, you are conscious to be one with your higher soul, uh, and you are, whether you're in your body or not, throughout the day, you're walking around doing your thing. That's why if you read the lives of some saints, uh, sometimes when they walk in nature, they're in awe all the time. Have you, have you read that? Like they, um, why? Because once they experience the nature, their real Buddha nature in them, everything has what they say, God or the omnipresent within it. Because 
we are in the aura of the planetary Parabrahman. So they experience that, right? So everything they see is divine, right? So the ground they're walking in is divine. The grass is divine. The air they're breathing is filled with divine essence. Something like that. Uh, that's why the Shirdi Sai Baba uh, story uh, about feeding the dog and also about the Swami Vivekananda story on uh, smoking hookah. Uh, not, not, not that hookah gives you oneness. Uh, it is about uh, a sort of an unta untouchable and the hookah story. Anyway, so all these we'll talk about that. Anyway. Recognizing the divinity in the And the tonsure, yeah, that is um, in a way of uh, hindrance in the way of psychic force, which in their meditation, the Kaiwa intend to try and arouse. I have no idea what psychic force is. Again, that could mean anything. Uh, I mean, psychic force could be good, bad, but obviously it's good because uh, they want to uh, get more of it in. Yeah, so for me, I think it's basically divine energy that's coming down. Whatever you call that in your respective religion or, or language, it doesn't matter. It's that energy that comes down to continue to help uh, change the condition of the crown chakra. From my point of view, uh, it's uh, the crown controls, uh, the pituitary gland is controlled by the ajna, all right, by the agni chakra. The, the crown, I don't think, has any control on the pituitary gland. It's not even connected as far as I know. Um, that's why whenever we do the inner breath, but it's very important, by the way, the pituitary gland. Sometimes if, you've, if you're Arhatic Yogi, you're doing the meditation in the inner breath, uh, when you go down, uh, it's the, the, your pituitary gland is basically the you know, base of the nose. Or here, you just go back. So when you form the Agni, when you're going down, just pass it through the pituitary with intention. That's what Master would teach us to do uh, a couple of times. So just pass it through uh, and let's see what happens in a couple of years. <laughs> or I'm not supposed to say that. No, no, I'm just I said that laughing. Already. <laughs> really? No, I'm joking. It's fine. It's fine. Um, okay. Oh, I'm in the Naval Center. Okay, so we'll just go quickly to the presentation because I have only 20 minutes to... Yeah, so um, uh, Nadia, I think, was mentioning about Lord Jesus. You've got to remember, Lord Jesus at that time was a Jew and none of these uh, Roman Catholic church was not even there. So what Lord Jesus did and what the saints practiced later is completely different. And so uh, I presume those practices came into play for different reasons by the church and also uh, the shaved central portion here. Oh, yeah. why do some paints, saints must have covered the head with a turban? Same reason as the Jews cover part of the head. We'll come back to it. It's not part of the book, but if you have time, we'll... we'll yeah, we can it. answer that. Because we have a few more minutes before you head, I think, to Sri Ram's session. I don't need to repeat passing through the pituitary. That, that's all you have to do. Just make an intention. NG follows where your intention is focused. Just pass it through and it should be fine. Don't make it complicated. All right. What else is there? Um... You finish that? Uh, no, the there's heart. another. Oh, there's another. One. So divine healing energy from your high self. So it's also very good for it's it's um, very good for healing. This uh, type of energy. Um, I don't know why I put that there. <laughs> it's absorbed by the crown and projected to the hand. The soul pranic energy is electric. While okay, so this is just to show you that there is an additional uh, entry point of energy that has not been spoken about. Okay, now it was just a summary. The entry point of divine energy is, physically speaking, is um, it's the entry point of divine energy. Let me try to just go back to the normal one. Where's the normal one? So I can't read. Anyway, so it's the entry point of divine energy, which uh, physically speaking, the functions, which stimulates the immune and defense system, as well as the entire body. All right. Uh, why uh, immune system? Because electric violet is uh, disinfecting in nature. It's very, very good for um, combating, uh, you know, disease and viruses and bacteria. Um, that is why when you do uh, twin hearts, and also, I have put a quote. Yeah, so energizing the cater or crown has the effect of energizing the whole body. All right. It's similar to pouring water on a funnel, causing the whole body to be flooded with healing energy. Okay, so it's really, really important because when you're dealing with the, with the crown, uh, that is why when you do twin hearts very regularly, we've heard same stories, at least when we were with Master Cho, I was, uh, I heard him talk about many times that uh, there's this eye problem and nobody knows what to do with it. Uh, the doctors don't know, the healers, so they're doing healing. They're doing the meditation twin hearts regularly with the feet in salt water and everything. And after about a few months, there is no more eye problem. The doctor doesn't know what happened. The healer doesn't know what happened. The patient doesn't know what happened. It just went away. So when we asked Master Chua, he's like, that is the effect of the crown. 
and the inlet of divine energy and the flooding of the uh, body with uh, electric violet energy. Can I just add? Yeah, yeah. Keep uh, and I think that's why Master Chua mentions that if you are unwell, you know, on, on you have a condition that you want to get healed, do not do, for example, the meditation of the soul or Raja Yoga, but you can do Twin Hearts because Twin Hearts has this flushing effect and healing effect. Right. And if you do, for example, the soul meditation, it becomes worse because it's very strong, very potent. And so if you want your body to heal itself, definitely continue with your twin hearts meditation. Yeah. All right. Physically. Now, um, let me see if I've added this. Now, it's important for proper functioning of the sense, sense senses. Uh, etheric, uh, anyway, sorry, I wrote it twice. Senses, physical and etheric senses. So the, tw the, the crown, along with the forehead, because you have to understand the forehead is not mentioned here. Uh, so we'll be more thorough. Crown and forehead, they usually are very important when it comes to the eyes. What, what are your senses? Your eyes, your ears, your throat, right? Um, you know, speech and uh, your, your sense of touch, all right? Your sense of touch, remember in the previous session, is crown, forehead, and basic. All right, from a physical point of view, from an etheric point of view, the crown is very important for all the senses, for a healthy uh, functioning of all these senses. It'll be interesting to see whether people with the, you know, you know, for example, sense of touch disorders based on that have a malfunctioning crown, forehead, or basic, or all three. My guess is it would be, it would be. Okay, so that's why I think uh, there are some, uh, you know where what is that ms mm -hmm. and a uh, few others the basic is really bad and the crown as well it's because of the energy the co coordination between the basic the energy from the basic going to the crown is severely affected there are a lot of slides to oh, okay. um now it controls and engages the pineal gland pineal gland whatever you want to call it all right and the ajna controls the pituitary gland right yeah. And it controls and energizes the nervous system along with the forehead. So the crown and forehead are in charge of the nervous system. So uh, that's why in MS also it gets affected. Um, I want to talk more, but we are running out of time. Now, the crown, uh, when you're talking physically speaking, etherically speaking, the size of your crown is directly proportioned to the healing power that you have. That's why maybe a saint doesn't know pranic healing, but they just put their hand on the patient, the patient gets better already. All right, that's why Master Chua said in the book, uh, Origin of Modern Yoga, Pranic Healing and Arathic Yoga, a highly developed crown chakra is necessary to produce rapid healing or even miraculous healing, all right, in many instances. That's it. That's the only time he's really spoken about miraculous rapid healing, what's required. He did not say you have to do 45 general sweepings, this and that. That is good. But without the crown, it becomes much more work. You could push the car and get to the place, or you could sit in the car and have proper energy to move the car forward, okay? Um, it is positively uh, and negatively affected by the energy from the sex chakra. These are all physical. Uh, for, so many, uh, many problems are due to lack of energy from the sex chakra going to the head area, right? So the crown is dependent on sex energy. So whether you have a puritanical attitude, that will affect negatively the crown chakra. If you have a positive attitude or a, a wholesome attitude or a neutral attitude, um, the energy flows normally and the crown uh, gets highly developed. Okay. Now, emotionally and mentally. Now, another thing for, for fever, uh, for fever, physically speaking, you have to make sure, you notice that in the fever protocol, the crown is mentioned. You have to make sure you clean and energize the crown because the crown controls the brain. And many times when the fever is high, especially for kids, you don't want the brain to get too hot. So by cleaning and heat it up, right? So by cleaning and energizing the crown, it ensures that the brain temperature remains normal or as much as, as much as possible. Or gives the body energy to help keep the brain at a normal temperature despite the whole body's temperature going up. That's why you put the putty, right? That what we call in India, that little cloth there constantly and, and see to it that it continues to cool the brain down. So emotionally minutes. and mentally speaking, I have seven minutes, so I'm going to go very fast because I'm, I'm, I'm on slide seven out of 14 and I have to, a lot to speak because you're not really spiritually yet. Okay. Center for I I intuition, right? Uh, Sumi's already spoken about it. All right. Now the crown chakra controls and energizes the brain by doing twin hearts. Now I wanted to give one way you can do it at least because you know, we're just talking scholarly then, right? So the twin heart meditation, the brain cells become highly energized. 
uh, and when it's done by children. So it is uh, very, very good for intelligence. That's why I put this quote. So it energizes their brain cells. They think faster, they become less moody and are more emotionally stable. So you realize that by the brain, like I told you, children, their lower chakra is activated because they're growing. So the, once the upper chakras get activated, they become less moody because they don't become restless anymore because they know where they want to go because the Ajna is bigger, the crown is bigger, and they're able to think and process faster because the brain has more energy and quality of energy is upgraded as well. Um, emotionally and mentally, houses the mental permanency which gives the design of the mental body. I'm going to skip this discussion because it's not relevant. No. One of the intersecting points of the Ida and Pingala energy channel, which is I'm not going to talk about it because we don't talk about it in the, it's not there in the Achieving One's book details, but the Ida and Pingala intersects into the uh, center of the crown or in, into the crown, somewhere on the crown. <laughs> okay. So when you do the breathing exercise very regularly, you start to get buddhic intuition. All right. Or it awakens your buddhic faculty. After a long time, we talk about 10, 15, 20 years of doing the alternate breathing exercises or balancing breathing exercises. Okay, and that is an effect on your mind and your emotional mental body as well as your high mental. Now, um, why, uh, when a highly activated and function, one ex can experience loving kindness with all. Okay, so this is, this is very, very important. It uh, allows you to... Um, okay, we'll talk about when you're talking about the alchemical part. But uh, when it's highly activated, it's not just... Like, I, like uh, Sumi said, it's uh, loving kindness for all, but... It's really, you have loving kindness for everything, including dogs and animals and trees plants. and plants and everything. All right. Now let's go faster. <laughs> uh, negative emotions combined with negative thoughts affect the crown as all, uh, uh, as well as, not sorry, not as all as, as well as the upper chakras negatively. When you have negative emotions and you combine it with negative thoughts, you know, sometimes you have negative emotions and then you beat someone up. You don't think about it, right? Someone pushes you uh, and you think, you did that? I beat you up. Why do you do it? I don't know. I just beat them up, right? So some people, they don't think they just beat up people. Um, but there are some people who don't beat up people, but they just think and criticize and criticize and criticize. This is the type of evolution we're going through. But it negatively affects the upper chakras. So the crown is affected by these negative emotions and thoughts. Spiritual um, functions. It is the spiritual alchemical center for the body. It's the, it's the center for dematerialization of the body. Um, number one, um, you have to understand, uh, when I was talking about the, um, the spiritual, you know, about the, what do I say? Uh, universal loving kindness. Once you understand that everything is, you know, everyone is a child of God, everything like that, you realize that people make mistakes and it's very easy to forgive them. And because of that, you realize that you have loving kindness for everyone. All right. This is the end result, not where we are right now. Okay. And now the spiritual alchemical center for the body. We covered this when we were doing, I think, um, one of the other heart, right? Um, that is why you have the golden aura of the person. If you've read the book, Spiritual Essence of Man by Master Chokokshri, you'll see uh, the aura is actually not gold, but after the sex energy is put with the energy of the crown, the whole aura becomes gold. And to convert that energy into golden energy, it requires alchemy. And one of the very, very important centers to do that is the crown chakra, okay? Uh, it converts sex energy to golden pranic energy. How it does that, we will not cover that now. Uh, so when your crown is highly functional activated, the grosser energy gets transformed by the Ming Min, all right? Even if you have negative emotions, angry energies, hatred for people, like somebody shouts at you, you feel hatred, but if you're highly developed, your Ming Min will automatically start to uh, change this energy. The gross energy gets transformed by the Ming Min, and it goes to the heart, which transforms it, and then goes to the crown, and then it gives you the ability by that time to, the energy is changed so much, that it gives you the ability to see things as they are and be compassionate and realize that everyone is a child of God and we're all growing, right? This is combining both expressions. And this growth implies making mistakes. So it's very easy to forgive, right? It's very easy to forgive. That's why in the Lord's Prayer, you'll notice that forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. If you read the uh, Universal, what's the name of the book, Universal? And, and Meditation on the Lord's Prayer, Kabbalistic uh, version of Meditation on the Lord's Prayer. Um, they use these structures for forgiveness. 
So when you're doing that in the Lord's Prayer, what you can do is you can think of someone who's a pain in the neck or whatever part and say, I forgive you. And this energy that will come out when you think of that person will be automatically changed by the Ming Men. Okay. It, its functioning is positively and negatively impacted by thoughts and emotions. Positively and negatively impacted by thoughts and emotions. Um, for example, what do you mean by that? Spiritually speaking, yeah? If you say, for example, I am the body, I reduce my receptivity to my guru or my teacher, it will be severely affect, it will severely affect the energy and the uh, functioning of the crown. Right. Therefore, all the chakras start to get affected because we notice in the previous one, it has a funneling effect and activation of all the chakras. And this is happening 24 hours a day while you're sleeping, while you're eating this funneling effect. So the bigger the crown, more energy is continuously coming in. So all aspects of your life, your health, your basic, everything gets feed, fed by this source chakra. All right. Um, and uh, so therefore all, all the chakras get affected, right? Because this is one of the major gateways of energy into the body. It's small and vice versa. If you say the Our Father, the Lord's Prayer with the right intention and recognize where you truly come from and who your real father and mother are as a soul, it becomes really, really big. So it, it uh, gets affected by your thoughts and emotions. Um, shall we stop? Should I continue next time? Or because I'm not going to finish. Idea. I have lots. Okay, then we should just stop. I know some of you have to go. It's not being recorded, so I'll let you move. No, it is recorded. It is. Here, we'll we'll upload it. it. Not this one. This one you can't upload. Anyway. I did it already for the last one, which didn't get, which didn't go live. Oh, really? Anyway. So, please repeat passing the pituitary function of astral center perfects and completes faculty. And twin hearts is recommended for person above 16. How can younger children? Uh, yeah, you can do it once a week from the age of 10. Yeah, 10 to 15. So what we'll do is we'll say a Thanksgiving prayer and then we'll answer those of you who've asked us questions. So the others who need to go for the session can leave. Yeah, so let's just close our eyes. To the Supreme Being, the Divine Father, Divine Mother, to our beloved and respected teacher, Grandmaster Chokov, Sri Lord Maha Guruji Neri, to all the great ones, to all the holy masters, holy gurus, archangels, holy angels and spiritual helpers, to the great teachers and masters of theosophy, to our soul and divine self, we thank you for your great, great blessings. Thank you for your tremendous patience with us. Thank you for all the light, for all the understanding and clarity imparted to us. Help us to continue to absorb and assimilate it and use it to become better divine instruments. With thanks and in full faith, Sophia. Thank you to all those who leave. Atma Namaste. We just answer questions and head out. There are no questions. There are um, here. Deepa had something about uh, chakra. 12 chakra is one foot above the crown, but as it develops, this would go correspondingly high. No, it would uh, be at the same place, but some people um, don't We're agree. talking about the 12 chakra. For those of you who know what the 12 chakra is, it's not here, so. It remains in the same place, it just gets bigger. Yeah. If you look at the book, uh, I don't know what book, Omanipadmi or? Yeah, it's like when your crown chakra or your Agni chakra continues to grow, it continues to grow in this area. It doesn't kind of move up or move down. The same thing with, uh, with what we're referring to the 12th chakra. And also the size of your aura also starts to change. Yeah. But it's not, there's no direct proportion from what Master Cho has mentioned. in his But book. definitely it's not in this plane. It's in the causal plane. Yeah. It's not in the, that's why you can't energize it with, you know, uh, normal energy. Right. Uh, so that's it. New messages. What about this? Function of acid perfects. Perfect and complete. That means it's fully awakened and functional. Yeah, okay. All right. So let's end. Done. Is this a person? About the head covering, we will talk about it. How and when can we watch? I think the link is on the first. Yeah, it's uh, it's a Vimeo link on the uh, communication that we've been sending. You can go back. I there think it's the beginning of the this chat also. Yeah, it's there in the beginning of the chat. Aditya, Aditya has put it there. Right. It looks like there's no other question, and uh, we will come back uh, to this a little later. Yes. Monday. Uh, yeah, Monday. Uh, Amit will continue with this part, and then we move to the next chapter. Right. Thank you, everybody. See you guys. Have a wonderful, wonderful uh, weekend. Next weekend is going to be interesting. We have Master Danny talking to us, so please register for his session. 
and on uh, Sunday we will have Guru Purnima. So those of you who are Hatha Yogis, we have a long session for you. Those of you who are Pranic healers or even have family who've been joining us with the Twin Hearts, you can also join us on Sunday uh, for the Twin Hearts uh, with Master Chua and Arhatik Yogis, we have a longer session. Yeah. Thank Bye. you. Take care. Bye. Atma Namaste. Bye.